Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went to Lose Gaming. Today, we'll be taking a deeper dive into Yai Miko's weapon options to see how many of her weapons compare to each other, ranging from free to play to comically expensive. And near the end, I'll provide some advice on what weapon you should use for your Yai Miko. As usual, we need to familiarize ourselves with my current Yai Miko's build. She is at level 90 and she's using the 2-piece gladiators plus 2-piece Shimanawas throughout this entire showcase. She's at Constellation 0 throughout and her talents are now at a much more respectable 6, 8, and 8. The way that we're going to do this is to observe how much damage each weapon does and then throw it into a chart. Then we'll compare my in-game observations to some theory crafting that I previously did to check the veracity of my old calculations. Finally, I'll be rating weapons with my highly original and definitely not patented slime rating system. Now keep in mind that the ratings are just based on my opinion. So let's make this quick and jump right into it. We're starting off with a newly released and free to play friendly catalyst, the Oath Sworn Eye. The Oath Sworn Eye provides 48% energy recharge after using an elemental skill. This is actually a lot of energy recharge. Unless you're using the Emblem of Severed Fates though, sadly its passive does not benefit her damage in any way. Fortunately, due to the way Yaimiko plays, she effectively has 48% bonus energy recharge at all times when using the Oath Sworn Eye. Here we can see that her elemental skill is doing 6,617 damage per crit, and her burst is doing 21,273 damage per crit. After averaging out the damage based on her crit rate, here is what the chart looks like to start. The Oath Sworn Eye is the baseline for this chart, and I'm giving this weapon a 3 slime out of 5 slime rating. Next we'll take a look at Yai Miko's signature weapon at Refinement 1, the Kagura's Verity, or the cat ball toy that my cats got bored of months ago. Here we can see that her elemental skills crits are critting for 9,990, and her elemental bursts Tenko Thunderbolts are critting for 26,747 damage. After averaging out my Yai Miko's average damage numbers, we are left with her elemental skill doing 49% more than the Oath Sworn Eye, and her elemental bursts doing 24% more damage. Frankly, the difference between the free-to-play option, the Oath Sworn Eye, and even a Refinement 1 Kagura's Verity is a bit egregious in this situation if I do say so myself. Anyway, the Kagura's Verity gets a 5 slime out of 5 slime rating for not just being an awesome cat toy, but also doing so much more skill damage than the Oath Sworn Eye. We're jumping to another free-to-play weapon, the Hakushin Ring. Interestingly, my Refinement 5 Hakushin Ring ended up doing nearly the exact same amount of damage as the Oath Sworn Eye while its buff was up. Equally interesting, the Hakushin Ring also has less energy recharge, 30.6% compared to 48% from the Oath Sworn. And because its buff duration isn't very long and you need to do an elemental reaction, I'm going to give this weapon a 2.5 slime rating out of 5. Anyway, the next weapon we're going to take a look at is the Dodoko Tails. The Dodoko Tails gains a fairly small 16% attack buff when the character's charge attack hits an opponent. Although it is undeniably cumbersome to use the eye's charge attacks, we can see here that with its buff up, it's doing a bit more damage than the Oathsworn Eye. Unfortunately, since the damage difference is as low as 4%, and even lower in full party situations, and although I didn't run the calcs for her charge attacks, the higher charge attack damage cannot be completely discounted. As such, I'm giving the Dodoko Tails a fairly reasonable 2.5 slime rating out of 5 slimes. Not great, but a usable option. And now for the weapon that you've likely been waiting for, the Widsith. My Widsith is at Refinement 5. Now I did this multiple times in order to get all three buffs of the Widsith to demonstrate for you guys. As we can see, the Widsith's elemental skill damage is very impressive, ranging from doing 47% more than the Oath Sworn with the Elemental Mastery buff to 60% more damage with the Elemental Damage buff. For the burst, the Elemental Mastery buff does not boost her burst damage in any way, but the attack and Elemental Damage buffs buff her burst damage to do 54 and 68% more damage respectively. For reference, the Widsith is doing more damage than even the Kagura's Verity with its 1 and 2 note buffs. Unfortunately, the Widsith, when its buffs are down, is basically doing the exact same amount of damage as the Oath Sworn Eye, 
and here are the calcs for your Widsith if it's at refinement 1, which is still a nice boost to her damage. All in all, the Widsith is one of the best options in terms of damage for Yaimiko for a 4 star weapon, but due to its long downtime and RNG buffs, I'm giving it a 4 slime out of 5 slime rating. The last completely free to play option that someone recommended is the Mappa Mare. Although my Mappa Mare is only at level 40, I mainly wanted to demonstrate how viable it is to activate two stacks on its buff. In case you don't know, the character equipping the Mappa Mare needs to be on field and then activate an elemental reaction. So in Yai's case, the best options for this are Electric Charged and Overloaded. By using Yai's basic attack after dropping her 3 turrets, she seems to be able to immediately gain 2 stacks on the map of Mare from Electric Charged. And with 2 gauges of Pyro on the enemy like from Bennett's E or Q, then Yai is also able to gain 2 stacks from a normal attack and then her elemental skill. Surprisingly, this was easier to gain 2 stacks than I expected. However, it's cumbersome to reapply its buff after the first rotation. Anyway, after a bit of math, we can see that it performs better for elemental skill damage than the Oath Sworn when it has some stacks up, but a bit worse when it has no stacks. In the end, I think the Map of Mare deserves a 2.5 slime out of 5 slime rating, mainly hurt by its clunkiness and restrictive rotations. I do have a couple additional showcases in the background for the Lost Prayer and Skyward Atlas, both at Refinement 5, but at this point, my in-game showcase calculations are literally within a percent of my previously theorycrafted damage maximized chart. So let's instead just take a look at the full chart with even more weapons. Based on this full chart, my advice is as follows. Use the Kagura's Verity if you have it. Now, should you pull for the Kagura's Verity? That's entirely up to you if you think around 50% more elemental damage when compared to the Osworn Eye is worth it. So you're going to have to make a call on that yourself. As for the other 5 stars, they are all comparatively better and worse than each other depending on the situation. And if you do have any of those, they are all still great stat sticks and you should consider using them. After the 5 stars, in my opinion, the overall best weapon is the Widsith, but only if you are willing to play around its downtime. One tip I have is to have Yai in the first party slot while holding the Widsith in Abyss. This allows her to first drop her 3 turrets and then her party can cast all their buffs. Yai can then quickly swap back and use the Widsith buff to do a big nuke and then drop 3 more turrets for maximum buff uptime. In fact, the Widsith with some refinements is even better than even the Kagura's Verity for a short amount of time, so you may even consider it over the 5 star options. After the Widsith, the next most recommended weapon for 4 stars in my opinion is the Solar Pearl. It's fairly reliable to activate the Solar Pearl's passive by simply switching Yai on the field and tapping left click. And finally, after the aforementioned options, I would recommend the Oath Sworn Eye. The extra energy recharge is nice to have in many scenarios, and heck, you may even want to consider using this weapon even if you have the others, depending on how often you need Yai's burst. Unfortunately, after the Oath Sworn Eye, I don't really recommend investing additional resources into these other options. But if you already have those other weapon options, then by all means, you should consider using them. In particular, I think the Black Cliff Catalyst thing is probably the next best option, but yeah. So there you go, my more in-depth analysis of Yai Miko's weapons as well as the brand new Oathsworn Eye. Let me know what you think about this video and what weapon you plan to use down in the comments below. Also, I regularly make Genshin Impact videos ranging from Caesar showcases, DPS showdowns, guide videos, and more. So be sure to smash that subscribe button as it's the best and easiest way for you to support my work. Also, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.